This video is going to benchmark the Hack Attack Junior. This machine is brand new. You can see inspected 5624. The setup that we're going to use is I have a Rapsodo pitching 2.0 unit set up there, 15 feet 6 inches away from home plate. It's going to read the spin rate and it's going to do the primary velo readings for us. I have a backup here to identify any outliers. I have the Pocket Radar Smart Coach. I will not be using this for most of the velocities. I'm just going to check to make sure that they're in rough agreement with each other. I am far too lazy to use the same ball for everything. So these are roughly in the same, same condition. There is going to be a little variance between ball to ball as far as like the spin rate goes and the axis, but that's life. Um, I'm just looking for more or less something in the ballpark. Speaking of not in the ballpark, this is their uh, chart that they have. I can tell you right now, if we just go to this right-handed curveball with the bottom at 10, the left at 5, and the right at 3, this won't even be a curveball. The bottom one is higher than the top. This is going to be a fastball, and I'll even show you. Like This is just less than worthless. It actually gets you, uh, like, uh, you know, when you think you're right, but you're not right, that's a particularly dangerous place to be. So, we can th throw that away. So I'll film a little bit of the process and I'll link you to the uh, spreadsheet uh, with all the results. Just to demonstrate how unreliable this chart is, let's start by trying a 45 mile an hour curveball, which would be appropriate for an 11, 12 year old to hit against. I know these values are gonna produce nowhere near a curveball, so let's do it. Nine and a half on that, four and a half, and two and a half. Let's let it ramp up. I'm gonna have to bring this down a little bit. All right, so this is supposed to be a 45 and a curveball. We'll see about that. We'll see if we can get it close enough to a strike. Should be close enough. All right, moment of truth. So lo and behold, we have a fastball. Noticed the backspin. Called it a changeup. We did get the righty um, as far as the spin direction, which is 1246. Um, but you can see, spin rate is pretty high here, 1415, and that's because the differential between the high and the low on this. So, 10 miles an hour off and the wrong pitch type. So here is the chart that's the result of about an hour of experimentation. We have our bottom wheel here, our left wheel, our right wheel, our miles per hour, our spin RPM, our spin axis. I'm targeting righties only, but you can switch the left and the right values to make a lefty. And then the Bauer unit. Bauer unit is very important because it's going to tell us if our spin rate is about appropriate. For fastball spin, you want to target a Bauer unit of about 20 to 25. 20 would be low, 25 would be very high. So, let's take a look at the values. First, let's say you're a coach of a AAA Little League division. Most of your batting practice, you want 40, 41, 42. And unfortunately, the Rap Soto does not register anything under 45. So I just took this quick reading with the pocket radar only, so we don't have spin. So I think this would be appropriate for the beginning of the season. You're just taking batting practice, and you want them to be able to hit something that's reasonably game-like. You're going to be facing a whole lot of 42 at the beginning of the season, especially as you get into relief pitchers in the AAA division. Now, let's move on to the above 45s where I got into the Rap Soto. For a AAA division, a very good pitcher in rec, AAA Little League, would be around 47 or so. That's kind of what you're targeting if you're targeting game-like repetitions. The best value here is probably this one. This is what I would start with. It's 48 miles an hour. It has a Bauer unit of 24.8. So it's going to come in a little bit straighter because there's more spin. And the axis is about right for a righty. Now I want you to keep in mind that this axis of 154, while it is typical for a righty, 
is going to be somebody with a slightly lower arm slot. Um, you will probably need to push that more towards 120, 1 o'clock to get um, probably like your dialed in, absolutely standard spin. But I think this would produce a lot of good results for most AAA teams. Now, for majors teams, if you're looking to take non-competitive, <coughs> excuse me, batting practice, so something that you're not likely to face, this would be it. You're just getting swings in, working that. Now, as we go up in the chart here, this one here is a good value for somebody in the majors division or elite AAA. Let's say you make it to the TOC tournament, the All-Stars. This would be the value that you probably want to set. 52.6 miles an hour. Bauer unit is about right. Keep in mind that there's variation between pitch to pitch on spin rate, on spin axis. Um, again, this is probably a little bit too ang axis this way. We probably want to bring it up a little bit, but we're really kind of splitting hairs. I think this will produce what you're, what you're looking for for that. I would take a lot of batting practice in majors division at this. You're going to face a whole lot of 52-53, especially in the beginning of the season. I would say that that's the average rec pitcher for Little League in the majors, which is 11 to 12 years old. Now, as we go up, this is to 54. I had trouble finding the appropriate value for the Bauer unit. You can see that this pitch was 20 and this one was 30, so much too high. Some of that, I did bump up the bottom wheel, which will increase the backspin and hence raise the Bauer unit, but it really jumped up a ton. So it's probably somewhere within this range, and there's probably some variance from baseball to baseball, but this is what I would be targeting for a lot of your batting practice that you're aiming to be game speed. Now, as we get into the upper 50s, this is a perfect value. You want to memorize this. This would be probably a first place team in the majors divisions pitcher. This is right on the head. Bauer unit 24, 57 miles an hour, 150 on the spin axis. Use that. As we get into the upper, upper 50s here, um, this one wasn't a real value, so that one you want to throw away. 17 is probably too low. Um, this one, a little bit too high, so I might want to dial that back to 8.1 and reduce the Bauer unit a little bit. But about 59, 60, around there is an all-star pitcher. And then this one here is probably a very, very good all-star pitcher. Um, in the majors division is what I'm saying here. These are too high for AAA. Now, with curveballs, it's going to be a little challenging because, again, it needs to go over the 45-mile-an-hour threshold to trigger the Rapsodo. So you're going to see all those values around there. And in the majors division, at an all-star level, so the people that are throwing these 58s, 59s, right around here, their curveball is going to come in at around 45. So you can see me exploring different values for around that 45 to get the Rapsodo to trigger. We want a higher Bauer unit for curveballs. It's going to be around 28. And the spin axis is going to be ideally opposite of what the fastball is. So if you're at a 1 o'clock axis, you want your curveball to be around 7 o'clock. That is extremely typical. And I more or less just stopped once I found that value of about 47 miles an hour and a Bauer unit of around 27. This is going to be what you're going to want to set the majors division. Um, for AAA, you're going to need to eyeball it, but you don't face many curveballs in AAA. They're, they're there, but few and far between. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the graph and take a lot of benefit out of it.